Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Finally, I made it to the class. It was just I was running from my from there from the metro station, but now I'm home. So we can start the class positively. So today we're gonna discuss about. The combined DNA technology. discuss all the techniques in the molecular biology today so it's gonna be really exciting uh, lots of things we will discuss RT-PCR many transgenic and many more techniques so we will be focus only on these classes on these topics today mainly yeah So just wait for another two minutes and then we start the class. Hello, hello everyone. Very, very good evening. Very good evening. Urvi, Aditya, Momita, Ananya. 
कातवीरान नाइना अनिश्मिता योगिता आकांक्षा सारा वैष्णवी अक्षिता सौजित कुणाल रमेश सौजित गोपिका फॉलमी अक्षय निधिप शनमुका श्रुति सुमरन पूजा बायो स्टडीज एंड श्रीजा शस्वती ओके सो वी कैन स्टार्ट नाउ आई गेस लेट मी जस्ट ग्रैब मी ग्लास ऑफ वाटर आई डिडेंट ड्रिंक दैट देन आई हैव सम लिटिल बिट एनर्जी मम्मी I need to grab it for myself. so so these are the techniques we're going to do it so let's start one by one one by one so pcr we have uh, studied before that is polymerase chain reaction which is done by the amplification of dna so can be used to amplify rare specific dna sequences from a complex mixture when the ends of the sequence are known so pcr amplifications of mutant alleles allows detection of human genetic diseases and dna sequences can be amplified by pcr for use in cloning as probes and in forensics so the carrie mullis she got the nobel prize winner in the chemistry 1993 so the pcr reaction mix it has buffer template dna primers nucleotides dna polymerase and water so we have done that technique like it has three different parts denaturation annealing and extension and then this cycle continues for millions of times like 35 cycles and then you have multiple copies of the same then gel electrophoresis this we also have uh, revised a bit we will do that in, in details up come in upcoming lectures so basically what is happening is that in them dna restriction fragments they are placed in the mixture well of agrose or polyacrylamide gel and apply the electric field so you have this well which has negative and positive end and these have you have gel particles yeah you have pores also then when you put this uh, dna restriction fragments inside your gel so molecule moves through the pores in gel at rate inversely proportional to their chain length so the smallest will move faster and the largest will be at the top so here we can see 1 kilo base pair 3 kilo base pair 8 kilo base pairs and so on so this southern blotting and northern blotting so southern detects the dna northern detects the rna so here we can see in the southern blotting you have dna you cleave with a restriction enzyme i run over the gel electrophoresis then you transfer this gel over the nitrocellulose membrane and then over after transferring the nitrocellulose membrane you hybridize with the label dna or rna probe and then you check by the auto radiogram your your results is there and where is in the northern blotting is is just instead of dna you have a total rna with the same thing you transfer over the nitrocellulose membrane then hybridize with the dna probe and then you can see your results like that now comes your real time pcr which is done for the gene expression analysis which allows real time monitoring of pcr amplifications products by use of fluorescence the first step that we use in them is reverse transcription of rna into complementary dna then either quantitative or semi quantitative measurements are being used there is qpcr and it's a quite highly sensitive technique used in research lab and clinical diagnostic labs also 
so it has halogen tungsten lamp right uh, then you have excitation filters they go through these prisms yeah? then after throwing through a sample plate they got reflected back and then go through the emission filters then they've been intensified and then checked by the CCD chip so by this in the PCR in this RT PCR uh, you also have uh, various cycles like by 34 cycle you will have this much number of amount of DNA so like it's moving up like that and with the PCR cycle numbers they keep increasing on linear way so at the end the results that you see the amplification curve of the relative expression uh, values on the left hand side is the fluorescence on the exercise x axis is the cycle number so it has uh, your baseline yeah this is your log linear phase and this is your uh, end phase so initially when it started this is your sample a this is your sample b this value will be your cta and that second sample will be a ctb yeah and you will have your e target with delta CP target control minus sample and have E reference delta CP reference control minus sample. So the output is relative fold chain for semi quantitative QPCRs. So let's check. So this will be without audio. They will be showing it with this uh, prepare your reaction mixture for it like 2x Stuckman master mix. complementary DNA sample 10 microliter then cover with the micro seal film Uh, tightly so that the mixture is not going outside Let me analyze the results. You can see some peaks are coming up. So these things you will do when you are using this software. Uh, it will do automatically give you the values of your samples. You do them in duplicates or triplicates. Yeah, that's it. Now let's see the COVID. The COVID-19 RT-PCR that we see normally in our day-to-day -day life, right? In our, when I think most of you have done, had this, this uh, COVID test in your life. So we will check that one now. And and please, we can continue. I, if uh, there is no problem, that if we continue our class till 6.30 p.m., 
प्लीज लेट मी नो बट इफ यू हैव क्लास ऑफ वैक्सीन टेक्नोलॉजी ऑफ मेजोरिटी ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स देन वी फिनिश बाय सिक्स पी एम बिकॉज वी डोंट वॉन्ट दैट दैट यू ऑल्सो मिस समथिंग फ्रॉम द सिक्स पी एम क्लास सो आई विल स्टार्ट द क्लास एट द मोमेंट इन बिटवीन प्लीज प्लाई मी हु सो एवर हैज़ अ क्लास एट सिक्स पी एम एंड आउट ऑफ दिस फोर्टी स्टूडेंट्स सो वी फिनिश बाय सिक्स इफ नॉट वी कॉन्टिन्यू टिल सिक्स थर्टी बिकॉज आई स्टार्टेड माई क्लास a bit late today due to my uh, uh, some personal work so let's start covid-19 is an infectious disease caused by severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 when a person is infected the most common symptoms include fever cough and shortness of breath to start a test the samples can be collected by a nasopharyngeal swab or an oropharyngeal swab for nasopharyngeal specimen The swab is inserted in the nostril and gently moved forward into the nasopharynx. Then it is rotated for a specified period time to collect secretions that contain the virus. Once the swabbing is applied, the swab is placed immediately into sterile tube containing a viral transport medium. The standard method of coronavirus testing is polymerase chain reaction (PCR). which is a method that used widely in molecular biology to make millions to billions of copies of a specific DNA fragment rapidly coronaviruses contain an extraordinarily long single stranded RNA genome to detect these viruses with PCR RNA molecules must be converted into their complementary DNA sequences by reverse transcriptase then the newly synthesized DNA can be amplified by standard PCR procedures this approach is universally known as RT PCR To perform this method, basically viral RNA should be extracted. Several RNA purification kits are available for convenient, fast and effective isolation. To extract the viral RNA by using commercial kit, the sample is first added into a microcentrifuge tube. Then it is mixed with a lysis buffer. This buffer is highly denaturing and is usually consists of phenol and guanidine isothiocyanate. Also, RNA inhibitors are usually present in the lysis buffer to ensure isolation of intact viral RNA. Once the lysis buffer is added, the tube is mixed by pulse vortexing and incubated at room temperature. Then the virus is lysed under the highly denaturing conditions provided by the lysis buffer. Once the sample is lysed, a purification procedure is carried out by using a spin column. The sample is loaded onto the spin column. Then a centrifugation is performed. This procedure is a solid phase extraction method in which the stationary phase consists of a silica matrix. Under optimal salt and pH conditions, RNA molecules are bind to the silica gel membrane and at the same time, protein and other contaminants are not retained. After centrifugation, the spin column is placed into a clean collection tube and the filtrate is discarded. then a wash buffer is added the column is put in a centrifuge again forcing the wash buffer through the membrane this removes any remaining impurities from the membrane leaving only the rna bound to the silica gel once the sample is washed the column is placed in a clean microcentrifuge tube and an elution buffer is added then a centrifugation is carried out forcing the elution buffer through the membrane the elution buffer removes the viral rna from the spin column and a purified rna which is free of protein inhibitors and other contaminants is obtained after the extraction of the viral rna the next step is the preparation of the reaction mixture for pcr amplification in this step a master mix is used which is a premixed concentrated solution that consists of buffer reverse transcriptase enzyme nucleotides forward primer reverse primer tachman probe and dna polymerase finally to complete this reaction mixture the rna template is added the tube is mixed by pulse vortexing then the reaction mixture is loaded into a pcr plate which generally contains 96 wells allowing the analysis of several samples at the same time next the plate is placed in a pcr machine which is essentially a thermal cycler real time rt pcr is used for the detection of the new coronavirus 2019 by the amplification of target sequences in the rdrp gene 
the E gene and the N gene. The choice of the target gene depends on the primers and the probe sequences. The first step in RT-PCR is reverse transcription. The first strand complementary DNA synthesis is primed with the PCR reverse primer, which hybridizes to a complementary part of the virus RNA genome. Reverse transcriptase then adds DNA nucleotides onto the three prime end of the primer, synthesizing DNA complementary of the viral RNA. The temperature and duration of this step depend on the primer, the target RNA, and the reverse transcriptase used. Next, an initial denaturation step is applied, causing denaturation of the RNA-DNA hybrids. This step is required for the activation of DNA polymerase and simultaneously the inactivation of reverse transcriptase. PCR consists of a series of thermal cycles, with each cycle consisting of denaturation, annealing, and extension steps. Denaturation step consists of heating the reaction chamber to 95 degrees Celsius and it is used for denaturation of the double-stranded DNA template. In the next step, the reaction temperature is lowered to 58 degrees Celsius, allowing annealing of the forward primer to its complementary part of the single-stranded DNA template. The annealing temperature relies directly on length and composition of the primers. In the extension step, the DNA polymerase synthesizes a new DNA strand complementary to the DNA template strand by adding free nucleotides from the reaction mixture that are complementary to the template in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The temperature at this step depends on the DNA polymerase used. After the first cycle, the double-stranded DNA target is obtained. Then, the denaturation of this double-stranded DNA is performed, yielding two single-stranded DNA molecules. In the next step, the reaction temperature is lowered, allowing annealing of the primers to each of the single-stranded DNA templates, and annealing of the Tachman probe to its complementary part of the target DNA. Tachman probe consists of a fluorophore covalently attached to the 5' prime end of the oligonucleotide probe. The fluorescence is emitted by the fluorophore when it is excited by the cycler's light source. Also, this probe consists of a quencher at the 3' prime end. The close proximity of the reporter to the quencher prevents detection of its fluorescence. In the extension step, DNA polymerase synthesizes new strands. When the polymerase reaches a Tachman probe, its endogenous 5' prime nucleus activity cleaves the probe, separating the dye from the quencher. With each cycle of PCR, more dye molecules are released, resulting in an increase in fluorescence intensity, proportional to the amount of amplicant synthesized. This method allows the estimation of the amount of a given sequence present in a sample. The number of double-stranded DNA pieces is doubled in each cycle, therefore, PCR can be used to analyze extremely small amounts of sample. For the measurement of the fluorescence signal, a tungsten halogen lamp, an excitation filter, mirrors, lens, an emission filter, and a charge-coupled device CCD camera are used. Filtered light from the lamp is reflected off-mirror passes through a condensing lens and is focused into the center of each well. Then fluorescent light emitted from the wells reflects off the mirror, passes through an emission filter, and is detected by the CCD camera. In each PCR cycle, light from excited fluorophore can be detected by the CCD camera, which converts the light that it captures into digital data. This method is known as real-time PCR, which allows the monitoring of the progress of the PCR reaction as it occurs in real time. Yeah, so I hope now the RT-PCR thing might have been clear, there will be no issue in that. Good. Now comes your DNA microarray, uh, which is done to analyze genome-wide expression. Uh, that is your transcriptome analysis. So this is consists of thousands of individual genes sequences bound to closely spaced regions on the surface of a glass microscope slide. Or synthesized sequence on a chip surface. So DNA microarrays allow the simultaneous analysis of expression of thousands of genes and the combination of DNA microarray technology with genome sequencing projects enable scientists to analyze the complete transcriptional program of an organism during specific physiological response or developmental process. So you have your fibroblast without serum, you have a fibroblast with serum added. Then you isolate your total mRNA from both of them and then with the help of reverse transcribe that is to complementary DNA you add the fluorescent dye that is your green dye and red dye. 
then you mix them together then hybridize to dna microarray then you wash them and then measure these green and red fluorescence over each spot so you see an array of 8600 genes right now if a spot is green the expression of that gene decreases in cells after serum addition if the spot is red the expression of that gene increases in the cells after the serum addition so in this way you have your red spot green spot yellow spot and black spot and each spot contains unlabeled dna probe corresponding to the part of one specific mrna so red plus green makes yellow uh, which is identical expression level in both your samples that we have used with the red and green so this way we can have this cluster microarray analysis data this is a micro bioinformatic analysis data that is in silico uh, like computational biology in which it's showing the red genes and green genes uh, together so let's check how this is done this animation will demonstrate how dna microarray experiments are performed DNA microarrays, sometimes called DNA chips, reveal the expression of thousands of genes on a solid surface, such as a microscope slide. In this example, we'll use yeast as a model system to illustrate one use of microarrays. One common use of microarrays is to determine which genes are activated and which are repressed when two populations of cells are compared. Every gene is measured simultaneously. As an example, we'll compare what happens to yeast genes when cells are grown in aerobic versus anaerobic conditions. The cells grow and adjust which genes need to be activated or repressed in order to survive. Now it is time to isolate the mRNA from both populations of cells. The cells are spun in a centrifuge. Now that the cells have gathered in pellets, we remove the liquid, but not the cells. Next, it is time to extract the mRNA from the cells. When we add the extraction buffer, the mRNA is released into the solution. Next, we remove the RNA and place it in a fresh tube. Now, let's make the cDNA from the mRNA. Here we see three of the many mRNA molecules from each tube of cells. Each mRNA is converted into red or green colored cDNA. When the colored cDNA is made, the mRNA degrades. Then we combine the red and green cDNA, mixing both colors into a single tube. At last, it's time to look at the DNA microarray. In our experiment, a microarray or DNA chip contains about 6,000 spots. Each spot is a different yeast coding sequence from a different gene. Let's choose three spots at random to follow in detail. Each spot is made of DNA that can base pair with its complementary cDNA. Here are partial sequences from each of the three spots we are observing. Now, let's incubate the mixed cDNA with the DNA chip. For the sake of our example, we'll zoom in and show that some of the labeled cDNA have bound to the DNA in the spots and formed base pairings. Here we see green and red cDNA bound to this spot. Only red cDNA is bound to this spot. And only green cDNA bound to this other spot. In a real experiment, you would not see any of this detail. You would only see the original microarray. Now we must wash off the unbound cDNA to see what is bound to the microarray. Let's detect the bound cDNA so it can be visualized. We begin by placing the microscope slide containing the microarray inside a scanner. We'll examine the next phase of the process, keeping our focus on the three spots we've been following. First, a green laser scans the microarray. The resulting image is stored on a computer for later analysis. Now it's time for the red laser. This image is also stored on a computer for later analysis. Now we move to the analysis phase. After we eject and safely store the microscope slide, we retrieve the red and green images from the computer and create a merged visualization. In the merged image, we see an aerobic gene labeled in green, an anaerobic gene labeled in red, and a gene labeled in yellow that was expressed in both aerobic and anaerobic conditions. 
This is one example of how DNA microarrays are used. In an actual experiment, quantitative analysis would be conducted on all 6,000 genes. Yeah. So we are done with the PCR, RT-PCR, uh, the COVID PCR, um, now the DNA microarray and um, now let's continue the next part, the same level. Uh, join this uh, BioClue students if anyone uh, in the part of, uh, you know, uh, bioinformatics because this is the upcoming line most of the life will be over this part there are a lot of uh, PhD positions are being opened so this background with the bioclues here bioclues.org join this uh, google and just check it check it over there it's one of the nice one of the nice group ever I really like it it's basically for the students who are into the bioinformatics or computational biology and you get really good opportunities to go for your PhD, go for your masters abroad here in India. Uh, one of the even it's on the Facebook also. They have this uh, Google mails also coming up. They have also some Viber group, I guess maybe. Okay. Um, so it's, it's nice one. So please confirm me. Can I continue after six also? Yeah, yeah, I will I will give you these all videos. These videos are also in my presentation and I also have these videos with me so I can do it both. So no worries. Don't worry about that. You will get all the material that I'm, I'm teaching you here. And just confirm me, you all students, can I continue after 6 p.m.? Uh, because if I start now, I will keep continuing till 6.30 then and until we finish this topic today. So please confirm me in the chat box. If anyone has any issues, uh, please raise your hands. So we will make sure that we should not continue after 6. We make our class then at 9 p.m. Just let me know if there is no issue, then we can continue after 6. Yes, 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 you can, you can. I can continue, okay. Yeah, please, please confirm me. It will be very helpful for me. Okay, no one has any problem. If somebody has, please write your uh, your comment also. Don't worry that I will say because all students are equal for me. Uh, if, if somebody has an issue, please let me know. So we will keep our class six, stop at 6. Don't worry that you will be feel bad because... Okay, we continue. That's it. So now we have discussed all these uh, important aspects here now let's take to the more about um, this applied therapeutic cloning right? uh, how cloning could be beneficial for a day to day our life yeah so investigating genes with biotechnology approaches why is it important because of its applied therapeutic cloning and genetically modified organisms so applied therapeutic cloning which producing big amounts of identical copies of dna of interest and the gain of functions analysis and expression of genes in other organisms that is a transgenic organism so you obtain large amounts of proteins example protein drugs such as insulin are produced in bacteria or yeast from a human gene and to investigate the functions of proteins in cell culture models or in in model animals can be studied in details in order to find the test effects of the drug treatment or in the GMOs, they are the living organisms as we know, we do either delete some gene that will be called as knockout. Remember that if you delete a gene that will be known as a knockout. If you add a gene that will be known as a transgenic organism. If you change a gene that will be known as a mutant transgene. Yeah? So three different types, knockout, transgenic and mutant transgene. And they are being created for generating improved agricultural crops with resistance against vermin or having increased content of healthy protein to generate transgene animals uh, in basic medical research 
transgene uh, animals are extremely important for the understanding of disease and possible treatment. And also in farming, generation of healthy animals with improved production potential. So DNA cloning with plasmid vectors or so combinant DNA technology enables to produce large number of identical DNA molecules. Yeah, DNA cloning. Clones are typically generated by using uh, placing a DNA fragment of interest into a vector DNA molecule which can replicate in, in bacterial host cells. So when a single vector containing a single DNA fragment is inter introduced into a host cell, large number of fragments are produced along with the vector. So two common vectors that we use are E. coli plasmid vector and bacteriophage lambda vector. So we are having these uh, plasmids which are extra chromosomal uh, self-replicating DNA molecules. Uh, so we are having E. coli, SARC, EPN, SM, BAM, H1 and so on. So these are polylinkers which having multiple cloning sites. Then there is the origin of replication sites in these plasmid vectors and there is a plasmid, uh, this uh, ampicillin resistance gene also present. But this region is the one which is exogenous DNA which could be inserted into an organism, any organism. So in general, uh, the general procedure for cloning with a recombinant DNA plasmid vector. So you have a plasmid vector, right? And then you add your DNA fragments that you want to be cloned. Then enzymatically you incite this into the plasmid vector like that. And then you have a recombinant plasmid. Then you mix your E. coli cells with these plasmids in the presence of calcium chloride. And, and also you add in a nutrient madam, a medium uh, with ampicillin into it. So your bacterial chromosome uh, will have these plasmids inserted into them. And your cell will be transformed and E. coli will su cell survives. But the one which does not have these plasmids, the cells will not survive and because of the ampicillin present. Then you take the independent plasmid replication, then cell multiplies and then you have a colony of each cell containing copies of your recombinant plasmid, which could be used for further applications. And you can also do multiple cloning, multiple plasmids could be added. So you have your plasmid vector then DNA fragments that you want to clone, then enzymatically insert DNA fragments into the plasmid vectors, blue, red, green, and this uh, gray. Then you transform into the E. coli, so you have multiple clones with difficult, different uh, plasmid vectors being grown. And beyond that, so section enzymes play a quite big role into your cutting your enzyme, your sequence from specific sites. So section enzymes are site-specific DNases, which uh, generate double-stranded streaks, until now, more than 600 naturally occurring section enzymes have been identified and they recognize 4 to 6 base pair sequence patterns and section cuts are most often asymmetric, generating single standard overhangs. So you have restriction enzyme E. coli here, you have unmethylated DNA and then it will cut from here and there and while cutting because GATC, GATC, so from both sides it sp uh, spells same. So these restrictions recognized sites are usually palindromic, right? They are palindromic and examples of palindromes are ANA, Otto, Radar, Kayak and so on. So they will give a sticky ends. You can see these sticky ends, AAT, TT, AA and so on. Then selected section enzymes. So these are BAM H1, SAW 3A, E. coli 1, HINT 3, SM A1, NOT L. So all, all these are different enzymes having various source microorganisms with various recognition sites. And the ends produce like sticky ends, uh, some are giving also blunt ends. So all, all of them, they're cutting from the side, but only the SAM A1, it's cutting from the center leading to the production of blunt, uh, blunt end. Moreover, in the cloning, restriction fragments with complementary sticky ends are ligated easily. How come? So there is a DNA1 and there is a DNA2. So it has the DNA1 has TTAA site, right? So it will have the correspondingly AATT site only, that is the A, not any other site. So they will come paired with the, uh, it will not pair with the B or C, it will pair with the A, right? And then your both DNA and 1, 2 are joined together. And then with the help of DNA ligase and two molecules of ATP, uh, you have a recombinant DNA ready to go for. Uh, so let's check how uh, DNA cloning in a short uh, video, how it is. Mm.
good cloning vectors because they carry an origin of replication and are therefore able to replicate independently within a cell. Most plasmids used as vectors also encode some type of selectable marker, such as the gene for resistance to ampicillin. If the host cells are ampicillin sensitive, the only host cells that can grow on a medium containing ampicillin are those that have taken up the plasmid. Vectors must also have a small sequence of base pairs that can be recognized by a restriction enzyme. When this enzyme opens the circular plasmid, foreign DNA can be incorporated. When the plasmid vector and foreign DNA are both cut with the same restriction enzyme and mixed together, not all molecules will join to form recombinants. Some vector molecules will reanneal without incorporating foreign DNA. To identify cells that contain plasmids that have incorporated foreign DNA, a second marker gene is needed on the vector. This second marker contains the restriction enzyme site within its nucleotide sequence. If foreign DNA is inserted, the second marker is inactivated. This is referred to as insertional inactivation. A common second marker is the LAC-C gene, which codes for the enzyme beta-galactosidase. Beta-galactosidase can cleave a colorless chemical called X-gal to form a blue compound. Therefore, colonies of cells that harbor the intact vector, but no new recombinant DNA, can make beta-galactosidase and form a blue color in the presence of X-gal. However, colonies that contain new recombinant DNA cannot make beta-galactosidase and are white. There is also um, polylinkers facilitate insertion of restriction fragments. So you have a sequence of polylinkers like E. coli, SAR, KPN, SAM, BOM, H1, XBA, SAR, and so on. So you insert your E. coli restriction fragments. You have plasmid vector and you have genomic DNA. And then you insert them and then you have your recombinant plasmid ready to go. Then you have cloning transcriptome which you have as a complementary DNA which uh, has libraries are prepared from the isolated mRNA. So you have a mixture of cytoplasmic RNA like tRNA, mRNA and ribosomal RNA. On the other side you have oligo DT matrix. So on this oligo DT matrix which is having TTT mainly your mRNA will be adjoined because of the AAAA tail uh, corresponding at the end. So because of that trail it will come and attach to it we will wash away the ribosomal RNA and tRNA and then elute column in the low salt buffer then you purified your mRNA preparation. Yeah. Then preparation of a bacteriophage lambda cDNA library you have your mRNA here so in the same way you can do the same method in that also it's more bit complex. So at the end identifying analyzing and sequencing your clone DNA so the most common approach to identify specific clones involving screening a library by hybridization with radioactively labeled DNA or RNA probes. So labeled nucleotides probes are also used to identify specific nucleotides that is by the help of your southern and northern blot. Then drug sequencing is also often applied since se nucleotide sequencing and large scale sequencing uh, with the whole libraries of DNA or cDNA. The DNA sequencing, it has Sanger D deoxy methods. So this has, uh, now we, are, we have discussed so far about the cloning. Now we are talking about sequencing now. It's the new part. So Sanger, he's, he's the one who got the Nobel Prize winner for his method that he have identified. So what you do is, you have your this unknown sequence and you want to check that which is your sequence present. So you add a DNA polymerase, various DATPs, DGTPs, DCTPs, DDTPs and DDGTP in low concentration. And then you will see that uh, the one which is corresponding to your sequence, it will start moving ahead with the help of these and it, it will stop at the G. So where it is stopping, you know, that where it is stopping, we can recognize that sequence where it is stopping. So we can say that when you're having this primer and template, with the DNTPs and DNA polymerase and DATPs of one micromolar, 
so these sequencing are being stopped here like a a a so then we can separate them and run over the gel electrophoresis so we can see many bands correspondingly like here we can see many bands a here and t here and c here and g here and then we bring them over this with the help of bioinformatics analysis and then we can predict the sequence so first come a then comes t then come g then come c then come t t c g c and so on so let's see uh, how this technique is done Um, yet uh, it's very old technique mostly not used nowadays uh, it's a bit um, yeah thank you <laughs> I didn't thought it's so enthusiastic but you know I, I made these uh, presentation I, I, I become a child while making these things I just thought from the child perspective when I was a child the main problem that I saw that my teacher when came into the class uh, they will bring their notes and they start writing and start dictating us so bacho ye hoti hai southern blotting isme aap aise karte hain hum okay I will switch to English and we were like at that moment okay this has to be like southern blotting maybe it does it, it happens like that but I went into the lab and then I start doing it by myself it was not what it was in the theory and when I went to the practical there's very huge difference when you when you're doing something uh, reading in the books and you performing that as a practical there's a huge difference between them uh, because it takes some time to get used to it to troubleshoot it to work around it um, and that's why I thought why not we bring uh, videos and theory and then we continue these lectures in that way so that uh, so both things could be satisfied yeah okay battery is low
but still they were my gurus they were my teachers um i i really respect them because of them i had my btech degree yes if they have not taught me i haven't got my btech degree i have got admission for my masters which is a uh, primary criteria yes and then i if i have done my masters i couldn't get my uh, phd uh, criteria if i have done my phd i couldn't able to teach you this also so there is always things happens for the good find the good things out of it whatever you're doing there's always minus minus side also of that but forget the minus side and where is the chargers cable minus minus forget minus keep positive be positive okay let's continue so this is uh, yeah that's the thing i want to talk about now that's the upcoming future that has been used this is a mahajan imaging uh, in delhi it's a huge thing in mumbai also all the big cities it's a very big thing next generation sequencing you can get sure also cloned your whole human body you can get to know about any genetic disorders if you have any any problematics that you might have in future also your upcoming generation might might be having so with the help of this uh, next generation sequencing there are lot of things we can predict there's lot of things we can be saved because with the time it's become cheap earlier it it was so costly mainly the higher rich people could uh, afford it but even the middle class people um, when they're going to have a baby or uh, they do this gene sequencing uh, as a dna from the dna in order to predict many things it's like uh, you know rashi phal uh, this uh, astrology that we have uh, the same thing is your next next generation sequencing i could predict these two things together the people who are really good in this astrological mainly the one could predict many things good things and the people who have the best next next generation sequencing technique and they could predict the best uh, outcome out of it so it's it's just all depend upon how best things that you have which is which is the best machine that you have how much speed accuracy preparation time uh, how much manipulation are being taken care so you are taking in that part so basically it's rosh uh, rosh is the name in the market illumina yeah applied biosystem that's solid helicos pacific biosciences and life technologies iron torrent so these are the major names that are available in this uh, next generation sequencing market and the number of base pairs that has been increased after the year of 2004 since then it didn't see back it's keep on getting better and better yeah i think in 2003 we got the human genome sequencing project uh, successful since uh, we got to know about total human genome sequence then the all ali techniques start to come uh, regarding the same this is a summary table of all the techniques that we have discussed with its library and gs how much reads they had how many run time and how many giga base pairs per run are possible how much cost does they had what are the pros and cons um, with respect to them okay. then this is the summary again a better summary actually this is in detail summary this is a short summary uh, this is a rosh illumina and solid so according to there the chemistry that is majorly being used in three three different types of ngs is pyr sequencing polymerase based and ligation based in the application you use uh, emulsion pcr in the illumina we use a bridge amp and the solid we use emulsion pcr in the pair dance yes uh, we use uh, yes also like 3 kilo base pairs 200 and 3 kilo base pairs so time it takes 7 hours 4 days and 5 days and the cost per run it's 8000 8950 and then that is 17000 it's the most expensive solid but the per mega base pair the cost is bit cheaper in the solid but it's the most expensive in the rosh so you have to decide which things you want to go according to the uh, cost you want to see or you want to see time or you want to see more base pairs so these techniques we will discuss them all these techniques now in this video Generation sequencing or NGS is a powerful platform that has enabled the sequencing of thousands to millions of DNA molecules simultaneously. This powerful tool is revolutionizing fields such as personalized medicine, genetic diseases, and clinical diagnostics by offering a high throughput option with the capability to sequence multiple individuals at the same time. 
Sanger sequencing, first developed in the 1900s, is a gold standard for DNA sequencing, and it is still used today extensively for routine sequencing applications and to validate NGS data. It utilizes a high-fidelity DNA-dependent polymerase to generate a complementary copy to a single-stranded DNA template. In each reaction, a single primer, complementary to the template, initiates a DNA synthesis reaction from its 3' end. Deoxynucleotides, or simply nucleotides, are added one after the other in a template-dependent manner. Each reaction also contains a mixture of four dideoxynucleotides, one for each DNA base. These dideoxynucleotides resemble the DNA monomers enough to allow incorporation into the growing strand. However, they differ from natural deoxynucleotides in two ways. One, they lack a 3' hydroxyl group, which is required for further DNA extension, resulting in chain termination once incorporated in the DNA molecule. And two, each dideoxynucleotide has a unique fluorescent dye attached to it, allowing for automatic detection of the DNA sequence. As a result, many copies of different length DNA fragments are generated in each reaction, terminated at all of the nucleotide positions of the template molecule by one of the dideoxynucleotides. The reaction mixtures are loaded on the sequencing machine, either manually onto slab gels or automatically with capillaries, and are electrophoresed to separate the DNA molecules by size. The DNA sequence is read through the fluorescent emission of the dideoxynucleotide as it flows through the gel. Modern-day Sanger sequencing instruments use capillary-based automated electrophoresis, which typically analyzes 8 to 96 sequencing reactions simultaneously. Next-generation sequencing systems have been introduced in the past decade that allow for massively parallel sequencing reactions. These systems are capable of analyzing millions or even billions of sequencing reactions at the same time. Although different machines have been developed with various differing technical details, they all share some common features. 1. Sample preparation. All next-generation sequencing platforms require a library obtained either by amplification or ligation with custom adapter sequences. 2. Sequencing machines. Each library fragment is amplified on a solid surface with covalently attached DNA linkers that hybridize the library adapters. This amplification creates clusters of DNA, each originating from a single library fragment. Each cluster will act as an individual sequencing reaction. And 3. Data output. Each machine provides the raw data at the end of the sequencing run. This raw data is a collection of DNA sequences that were generated at each cluster. The differences between the different next-generation sequencing platforms lie mainly in the technical details of the sequencing reaction, and can be categorized in four groups. Pyro sequencing, sequencing by synthesis, sequencing by ligation, and ion semiconductor sequencing. In pyrosequencing, the sequencing reaction is monitored through the release of a pyrophosphate during each nucleotide incorporation. The released pyrophosphate is used in a series of chemical reactions resulting in the generation of light. Light emission is detected by a camera which records the appropriate sequence of the cluster. The sequencing proceeds by incubating one base at a time, measuring the light emission, if any, degrading the unincorporated bases, and then the addition of another base. This technology is capable of generating large read lengths, much comparable to the read length of Sanger sequencing. However, high reagent cost and high error rate over strings of six or more homopolymers have reduced its applications. For more details on the technical aspect of this technology, please visit our knowledge base at the link provided in the description below. Sequencing by synthesis utilizes the step-by-step -step incorporation of reversibly fluorescent and terminated nucleotides for DNA sequencing and is used by the Illumina NGS platforms. All four nucleotides are added to the sequencing chip at the same time, and after nucleotide incorporation, the remaining DNA bases are washed away. The fluorescent signal is read at each cluster and recorded. Both the fluorescent molecule and the terminator group are then cleaved and washed away. This process is repeated until the sequencing reaction is complete. This system is able to overcome the disadvantages of the pyrosequencing system by only incorporating a single nucleotide at a time. However, as the sequencing reaction proceeds, the error rate of the machine also increases. This is due to incomplete removal of the fluorescent signal, which leads to higher background noise levels. Our NGS, an introduction knowledge base, provides more technical details about this technology. 
Sequencing by ligation is different from the other two methods since it does not utilize a DNA polymerase to incorporate nucleotides. Instead, it relies on 16 octomer oligonucleotide probes, each with one of four fluorescent dyes attached to its 5' prime end that are ligated to one another. Each octomer consists of two probe-specific bases and six degenerate bases. The sequencing reaction commences by binding of the primer to the adapter sequence and then hybridization of the appropriate probe. This hybridization of the probe is guided by the two probe-specific bases and upon annealing is ligated to the primer sequence through a DNA ligase. Unbound oligonucleotides are washed away, then the signal is detected and recorded. After that, the fluorescent signal, along with the last three bases of the octomer probe, are cleaved, and then the next cycle commences. After approximately seven cycles of ligation, the DNA strand is denatured and another sequencing primer, offset by one base from the previous primer, is used to repeat these steps. In total, five sequencing primers are used. The major disadvantage of this technology is the very short sequencing reads generated. Ion semiconductor sequencing utilizes the release of hydrogen ions during the sequencing reaction to detect the sequence of a cluster. Each cluster is located directly above a semiconductor transistor, which is capable of detecting changes in the pH of the solution. During nucleotide incorporation, a single hydrogen ion is released into the solution and it is detected by the semiconductor. The sequencing reaction itself proceeds similarly to pyrosequencing, but at a fraction of the cost. Please view our knowledge base for further details on ion semiconductor sequencing and the sequencing by ligation techniques. In order to be able to showcase and compare the different technical aspects of each of the above technologies, the number of coverage that each run generates when sequencing the whole human, mouse, Arabidopsis saliana, and E. coli genomes are calculated and presented here. The presented data is based on the most powerful machines of each technology. Further details can be found on our knowledge base. For whole genome sequencing data to be useful, a minimum of 30 times coverage is required. As it can be seen, the pyrosequencing method is only able to sequence the E. coli genome at enough coverage to result in valid data. The sequencing by synthesis method, which is the most popular method currently on the market, is able to generate hundreds of coverage per run. In fact, with this machine, it is possible to sequence 15 individuals within three and a half days. The sequencing by ligation method also generates enough coverage for all genomes to be used. However, it isn't capable of generating nearly as much output as the Illumina HiSeq machines. The iron proton machine is used mostly in clinical settings because it is able to provide a sufficient size output within two hours. ABM offers a wide range of next generation sequencing services. These include whole genome sequencing, exome sequencing, RNA sequencing, disease panels, lane rentals, and much more. To be able to access our services, please visit our website at www.abmgood.com and from there, click on the NGS Sequencing Services link. This will load our NGS service webpage, which details all of our available services. Clicking on a service of interest will showcase the technical details, pricing, and bioinformatics solutions that are related to that particular service. Please leave your questions and comments below, and we will answer them as soon as possible. For more information, please visit our knowledge base at the link provided below. Thank you for watching. So, what are the applications of this NGS? They help genome uh, the resequencing human exons, uh, small and uh, long RNA profiling, chip sequencing, transcription factors, histone modifications, effector proteins, DNA methylation, polysomal RNA, origin of replications, uh, whole genome associations, and so on. It has varied applications actually. So. Uh, we are done with the sequencing part also, we are done with the cloning part also, we are done with the RT-PCR part also, we are done with the, um, uh, uh, one, of the uh, one of the most important techniques in the molecular biology. Is it lagging? No, I don't think so. Anyhow, I will share these videos with you uh, as soon as the lectures are over, so you can uh, watch them later. Yes, it's lagging. 
so i think we can stop it here um it's one hour it is done here so we can meet at 9 pm to continue with the next part because it started to lag now and we see us at 9 pm then yeah i it, it's it's uh, sending late details now so students we see us at 9 pm and continue uh with the mb techniques so we will discuss now about transgenic mice how your knock in knock out mice have been cr uh, created with videos also in that so until that time uh yeah take care and see you soon then